Hello, today we're going to talk about boundary interference. And by the end of the video, you're going to know about speaker boundary interference, listener boundary interference, and what you can do to identify and mitigate it. Stay tuned. Hey, I'm Michael Carrillo, aka Hex Spa. Welcome to my channel. Here I release original music and music making tutorials. So if you haven't, click subscribe. Let's start with speaker boundary interference. You might ask yourself sometimes, where should I put my speakers? There's a video saying how to find the ideal speaker location for your room. Well, guess what? Your room is probably not out of some acoustics handbook ideal example of the best place to record music. You have to deal with doors, pets, walkways, obstacles, you know, the room might be have a funny shape. So you need to put your speakers where they can go. But there might be a factor that you're not aware of. You know how you have your tweeters? Well, your high frequencies are the most directional. This is part of the reason I think cats can hear high frequencies. Besides that m mice don't have deep voices, high frequencies are very directional. So you don't want to put anything in the way because then you just won't hear them. They'll get absorbed or reflected or, or something. They're, they're not going to get to you. But a speaker, the lower the frequency goes, the more it becomes an omnidirectional radiator. You've heard of omnidirectional microphones, omni meaning all, all directions. So even your little five inch satellite speaker is actually sort of putting bass out more and more towards the bottom of its range. And your subwoofer is putting out bass everywhere. That's why your neighbors love you so much. Now, when this base meets its nemesis, the wall, that wall is not having it. It just says, go back to where you came from. Maybe a little passes through. Thou may pass a little bit, but not too much. So that dejected energy that comes back, joins back up with its original family, and it creates all sorts of ripples and stuff, like too many fat guys doing belly flops into a tiny pool. As a result, your listening experience suffers. That is speaker boundary interference. It's when the sound from your speaker hits a boundary, comes back and either constructively or destructively interferes. And this is why most rooms have very squiggly responses, but there's more to it. And that is your listener boundary interference response, LBIR for short. Although it's not really a short acronym, it's four letters. It's like NASA. What does that even stand for? You don't know. You don't, don't Google it. Found out that it um, stands for... Um... So when you're sitting somewhere, you, you have a desk, probably. And this is something I'm going through right now. If you want the best acoustics, you want no desk. Okay, if you look at mastering engineers, they tend to have small desks. Yeah, they have the gear, but it's not like this massive producer desk with the computer on the bottom and all the racks of stuff. Mastering engineers know that they need to have the best acoustics because they're the last man standing. After them, it's the listeners. You know, the project will be finished. So look to them when finding out what the best acoustics are. Don't look at Chris Lordology with his big SSL and his pride in gold chains. I am the sound of hits. I got it, I got it. I already know, I already know. Because even that gold chain is creating a little bit of listener boundary interference, which is where your ears and your speakers meet. So if you have the initial signal going straight to your ears from your speakers, that's great, that's what you want. But it's not all gonna go the straight and narrow. You've got rebels and your speakers actually, again, the, the directional frequencies spread out the low frequencies spread out even more and they hit stuff between you and the speaker. And then just like when the sound waves go behind the speaker and come back, they're gonna hit your monitor, they're gonna hit your desk, your keyboard, your all your MIDI controllers and your reflective pets. And that's gonna create more problems for you in terms of your frequency response at your listening position. And this is listener boundary interference. Basically, anything between you and your speakers or which includes the sidewalls, okay? So when you take speaker boundary interference and listener boundary interference 
plus your room modes as a total, that comes down to your SPL, okay? So how do you mitigate this? Well, placement. This is why a lot of people say that you want your speakers all the way in or all the way out. If you have your speakers all the way against a wall, then that frequency is pretty high. Or you can have it all the way out to where if your satellites are like cutting off at 120 hertz, then if you have them maybe 10 foot from the wall, then that won't even matter because your speaker's not producing the frequency that would constructively or destructively interfere with your, your listening position. Does this make any sense? You, you kind of need to have a grasp of acoustics to, to get this, but suffice it to say, your speakers are gonna go wherever they need to go. So what you gotta do is analyze your room, experiment with placement, and that's gonna give you the best response. So at least now you know what speaker boundary interference is, you know what listener boundary interference is, you know that placement and treatment is the way to combat this, and maybe in another video, I'll talk about how to analyze your response from something like Room EQ Wizard and how to move your stuff around to get the flattest response possible. So I hope this was helpful. If it was, give it a thumbs up. If you're confused about any of these topics, which you probably are, I mean, it's, it's complicated and no one can really predict um, exactly how all these factors are gonna play out in your room, that's why you need to measure. If you could just do it on paper, then why would you need to set up a microphone? Just, I mean, just to measure decay, that would be the only reason. But it's always a surprise when you set up a room, put that mic there, what's really going on. And that's because the complex factors, it's not one or two, it's like hundreds of, of different reflections and interferences all creating that custom tailored, beautifully screw, skewed response that you have at your listening position. So again, Feel free to ask questions, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll try to get that video on uh, optimizing your placement and stuff up soon, okay? Thank you.